Hey, this is Max. Welcome back to another CSR2 video. I am here with the uh, Bugatti Chiron Pro Sport uh, for the uh, Evolution Cup. And I'm going to talk a little bit about this particular cup, but the bottom line of these type of events is that it is a part-driven event, meaning if you don't have enough upgrades, um, I don't really care you know, how well you have the cartoon, you will not finish the Evolution Cup. Now, the Golden Cup itself, the legendary Golden Cup, already ended around 8.7 for me. So, in order for me to really beat the cup, I have to run under 8 for the most part. Um, the first race, usually, as I just showed you there, the first race usually is right at the, the same challenge level, but then it escalates very quickly from there. So, if you're barely beating Golden Cup, these races are just not going to happen. Now, if you see how I'm driving the car, I'm using um, the world record style tune and uh, technique, which is I'm running a lower final drive of 2.0, 0 to 100 higher, minimum nitrous duration, and I'm launching it at 4K or around 3, 3 to 4K and hitting nitrous right away. So it gives you uh, a Dino Buster run. Uh, this is a good thing, I guess, in the grand scheme of it, because if it beats Dino, it's probably okay for live but a dino beating run allows you to move forward the other thing is i'm running only four stage sixes and i'm doing that on purpose here i wanted to show you that this can be beaten without the weak stage sixes the bottom three weakest stage sixes are tire um, turbo and intake engine actually is pretty important so the four stage sixes i'm actually running nitrous trans body and engine so as you can see, the car runs uh, high sevens, 7.7 range, but it can, in fact, do everything, including the speed traps this way. Now, if you notice, I launch a little differently this time. I actually launch late. This way, I don't waste the nitrous on first. I use nitrous in second gear, and that gives me a much higher mile per hour of 291. Actually, that's what the dyno says the maximum you're going to get anyway. It's around 292. So this car is not set up right now to specifically go after speed trap or go after time or go after sprints it just set up to be enough to beat the event i actually had to pull all stage sixes to get the ones i need and this is the second time around i'm doing the evo cup this is why i can tell you i know what i'm looking at here because i've already beaten it once on the video account to just make sure what's required and i'm back at it now with my main account to do this the unfortunate truth is uh stage six drops are pretty poor from the crates so you're going to end up probably getting all the stage sixes before you get the four that you need so i had to max out the car just to then find the four that i need to actually beat the event but again if you happen to get lucky and get these four and you have the fusions basically you can beat the event without all stage sixes and this is what I'm doing right now. I'm going to run through all 16 races uh, without switching and adding any other stage sixes than the four that I mentioned. Uh, again, those are engine, uh, nitrous, body, and trans. So using the, uh, the down tune, in a sense, the uh, 2.0 final drive tune, what the early launch of nitrous gets you from an 8.1 dyno but you're running like a 7.6, high 7.6s. If you have a good device and better shift than I have, you may even be able to hit mid 7.6s or even lower. So bottom line is that it's enough to definitely beat the required times. The only challenges are those little speed traps in, the, in between. Um, the speed traps are also designed for these upgrades, meaning if you don't have these upgrades and the fusions, your car simply won't hit. Uh, 286 or 289 whatever it is in the final speed trap here's the 286 again i'm going to launch late so i can use first gear and then nitrous second that guarantees i will get the mile per hour otherwise if you use nitrous first you run out before the end and you may actually only hit about 286 uh, or 285 mile per hour even with this level of upgrades so here we go race nine coming up so again 291 mile per hour made it right through that i don't get too excited about evolution cups for this reason because 
you're either going to make it because you have enough parts or you're not going to make it because you don't have enough parts. Tuning does affect it to some degree, of course, but evolution cups are really designed as a uh, way to make you build the car because they make it hard enough that if the car is not close to maxed with all the right stage sixes and more than enough fusions, you're not going to get through the evolution cup. The trade-off, of course, is always if you have more stage sixes, you can do, oh, that's new. Microsoft something. Um, so I update it so I get this uh, new uh, video ad thing. But anyway, um, I digress. So if you don't have the, you know, if you have all the stage sixes, you may be able to have less fusions. Or if you have uh, less stage sixes, you're going to need full fusion. So that's kind of how these cups always work out. It's a part based cup. And either you got the parts and the upgrades or you don't and you're just not going to make it. All right. So running it honestly doesn't take that much skill because if your car is upgraded enough it's not really a skill based challenge uh, you just run it approximately to where the car can do the best and if it beats the time it beats the time if it doesn't beat the time you're not going to beat the time and you just have to go back and pull more crates all right so at this point it looks like i'm getting the same car uh, so i'm probably reaching the limit of where i'm going to be um, getting to now i'm Driving it a little differently this time to see if the time makes a big difference. I think it's a little bit slower doing it this way. Uh, well, it's close, but it's not great, right? So it's not hitting 7.6s. Uh, so the early launch nitrous right away seems to be a little bit faster overall. Uh, but it's enough. So anything under 8 seems to be enough so far. But a 8.0 car probably cannot do the speed trap. That's the, that's the rub. Right, so yeah, you can go fast enough for the time, but then you're stuck with the speed trap. Uh, that's the same problem, you still won't get through. I haven't tried tuning it for speed trap, uh, to be honest, because the car already can do it, but I find that this car doesn't just easily get um, a higher speed trap than what the dyno says, but that's not to say that it's not possible, I just haven't really tweaked it. So I'm just kind of cranking through this as fast as I can. I'm not really even trying to uh, figure out anything specific. I just want to know that, and I do know that, these four uh, stage sixes are the ones that will get you through. At the, in, in, the, in the case of difficulty overall, this one's not too bad. Um, I remember the um, Dodge Demon Evo Cup was ridiculously hard that you needed pretty much a fully max car with maybe one missing S6 turbo or intake being the only thing you can miss. This one you can miss out on three stage sixes and still make it. And this is a very fast car doing 8.9, under 8.9s with just stage five. So it's it's one of those cars that can take down Harkness without actually having to um, have any stage sixes. So it, it's an incredible car in that sense. But then again, it's no more incredible than all the other Bugattis we have. So it's just another Bugatti. I mean, it's not, it, it doesn't really make it so that it's a must have in that sense. And uh, I think I'm on my delivery here for, uh, or am I on the last race here? I think this is the last race. Yep, last race. Okay. So Venom F1. So this will tell us exactly what the car runs uh, on the final. And as you can see, same deal. As long as I'm running seven, so I'm well ahead, and it's not catching up. So what do we got? <laughs> Seven point nine four eight in my case. Now I've seen eight point something. Again, if you're kind of cutting it close and you got this far, um, I think you may still be able to beat this. But you, you're going to need like an eight second car though, at the minimum. So that should be it. I should be getting delivery. There it is. Uh, red, purple star version of the same car. So the thing about these purple star cars, it's nice to collect them. It's it's wonderful that I was able to get it. Um, I find oftentimes, though, from a uh, building tuning standpoint, uh, a purple star car isn't necessarily that much more wonderful than the yellow star, other than you, obviously, you get the RP bonus. Uh, you have the, uh, you know, bragging rights that it's a purple star car. It's got the cool 16 thing in front of it. But outside of that, it's not really a car that, at least this one, in my opinion, isn't one that 
is so much better than the yellow star that I absolutely need to build it. And in fact, many times with purple star cards, I don't bother. Uh, so that's the Evolution Cup uh, made it short and to the point. I didn't really mess around, but I want to show you the parts to kind of confirm uh, I was able to do it with the parts that I discussed during the event. So trans, no tire, okay, no intake and no turbo S6. I didn't put them in. So I just wanted to make sure I can do them, but unfortunately I had to get them all just to get the last stage six that I actually needed. So in the end, you may still have to actually max the car just to get anywhere. Uh, so again, here's the tune, 2.0, 0.100, dyno is 8.180. Now, this is where the 2.92 and the 8.180, I knew going in that I can beat everything just by looking at the dyno. So that's that made this cup somewhat more predictable to me and in a sense, easier. Uh, now, because it also runs this kind of a time, uh, there's potential here for live racing. Uh, but of course, being that it's running under dyno, you could bump this car if, let's say, you know, you go out there. Now, part of the reason why I think this is a good uh, live racer potential is because it's running very high EVO at a reduced uh, PP point because I'm not using some stage sixes. So it should put me in a lobby that is competitive. And, they, and again, this is the first race it's going to do in live. So it better be in a competitive lobby. Uh, you may even be a lobby slower, but let's make sure that this is not one of those cars that get bumped all the way up just because. Um, race refused. Okay, no problem. Find someone else. Um, so it, it what happens is this car if it lobbies well meaning it lobbies into the lobby that it dinos initially and you can control it this could be an effective live racer and we're going to find out now uh, these mclarens are good cars too although i don't have it so this could be an interesting um, interesting race for me now i have the advantage i can go under dino but if i go under dino i'll probably get bumped right away so what i'm going to have to do is kind of run this as carefully as possible to keep the race as tight as possible. Okay, so I'm gonna watch him and slow down, slow down. All right, let's see how close that was. All right, so I am running under dyno anyway. I, I have an eight point, I, mine's 8.18 dyno. So I just went almost uh, 0.13 under. Now that's still within the bracket, so I should be okay. Uh, but I'll figure out this out more. But this obviously is a viable live racer because it is in the right lobby. It didn't get a negative uh, or a, a poor lobbying matchmaking outright, so it didn't push me up. All right. Uh, it always asks me to rate because I just updated it, but we'll, we'll hold off on that. So bottom line is it's not a bad car. Um, it's pretty easy to drive, pretty easy to tune. And uh, if you already have it and you want to build it, certainly um, I find most Bugattis to pretty, uh, be pretty decent. Not all, but most. So that is the uh, quick Bugatti Chiron uh, Pure Sport Evo Cup. Uh, I hope that uh, it was fun to watch. I know that I didn't really tune it like I would do with most cups that I've done in the past. But again, you see that it can be done with four stage sixes only. Hey, if you like the video, uh, please leave a like. If you have any comments, feel free to make them in the comment section. And if you want notifications, please uh, subscribe to the channel so you can get them. And as always, thank you for watching my video. I'll catch you next time.